And speaking of the bond between Rosemary and Sage, the two are currently at arms with one another, so much so that they waste time arguing over the obvious, allowing Olive to scamper away and hide, instead of just going after her right away. Rose! What are you doing? She said she'd shatter them. To death. That means Parsley's still alive in there. I'm going after her. Rose, wait! This isn't a game. The fight in the cave? We thought you were gonna die. You're being too reckless. Huh? No! Olive could be anywhere. Let's get down there and start searching. <gasps> 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 You numbskulls just let the villain escape with the pretense that going after her would be reckless and then you split up and go after her anyway. Everyone in this show is a moron. But in this situation, Rosemary's plan is the correct one. You do not wish to live in a reality where Rosemary is the least dumb person around. But what exactly is going on between these two? Why are these inseparable friends suddenly barking and snapping at one another? Is Sage simply worried for the safety of her best friend? She already came close to losing her once, so perhaps she lets her emotions come out less than constructive? <laughs> of course that's not the case, because that would actually make some money come of sense. The true reason for this quarrel is something far more petty and contrived. See, the show has decided that there must be some friction between these two to facilitate this split up. Rosemary must face Olive alone, and the rest of the cast do... something in the meantime. And so, the writers have Rosemary and Sage bickering over nothing throughout the festival. You can use this guide to get around the festival. It's got a whole list of activities. Um, thanks, but I made my own guide. It's got a grid. Uh, okay. Remember, after circling around the town, the autumn processional ends by the bandstand. There's fireworks, revelry. You'll love it as much as I love belly rubs. <laughs> oh. But who doesn't, am I right? Here, have some more guides. Uh, have a good time. Bye-bye. <laughs> she was nice. I don't know. Something felt off about her. Uh, don't be cynical, Sage. It's a festival. Sheesh. Cynical. I was just... Sage is distrustful of Olive, even though outside of meta context, she has no reason to be suspicious of her at this point. Olive's conduct is no more peculiar than anyone else in the show. By Sage's logic, Parnell is a secret supervillain as well. So Rosemary rightfully calls her cynical. That makes her sad. Oh, wow. That looks like... The dauntless crest of the House of Anguis. What? Since when do you study history? Since it's about dragons, Sage. You're not the only one who knows things about things. <gasps> I was kidding. Yikes. Rosemary rightfully points out that Sage isn't the only one who likes to read, provided that the topic is interesting. That undermines Sage's status as the smart one of the duo. So that makes her sad. And all of this mild bad blood comes crashing down once Rosemary dare suggest that she has different interests to Sage. What's on the docket fun-wise? Oh, I put all our names in for the flaming axe challenge. Isn't that at the same time as the gourd carving contest? You saw me sign us up for it. It's like pumpkin carving, but using ancient tools and adhering to very specific regional guidelines. I didn't see you choose that. I thought you wanted to spend our first processional together. I do! By hurling axes that are on fire! Rosemary, we always do what you want. I was excited for this. I know, Sage, but it sounds like homework. I'm sure there's a way to do both. Throw flaming axes at gourds or, uh, pull out those festival guides. I'm sure we can find a compromise. Or no compromises. Sage wants to do these things at the festival. Rosemary wants to do these things at the festival. And instead of both of them doing what they like on their own, 
and meeting up later. Uh, uh. Woohoo! Beat that sage! Rah! I'm good here. Are you still mad about the gourds? We ran out of time! What do you mean, still? It's been ten minutes. Oh, we can go do the next bummer thing you circled if you want. Thank you, your highness. <laughs> no need for royal address. I am but the great dragon of Chrysia. Was that dragon a jerk? If so, you're really nailing that costume. Oh. Sage, if you want me to be excited, pick something that's fun, okay? We don't need to be heroes today. For the record, none of the girls have done anything heroic throughout the series. Fixing your own shit is not heroism. Stabbing a monster in the face is not heroism. Being a hero means doing something for the good of others, possibly at the detriment to your own convenience. You know, altruism. Let's not dilute the meaning of words. But please, do continue. We can just be kids! Do you even remember what that's like? Or are you too busy being perfect for the teachers? Who, by the way, are all completely hammered right now? Of course I remember. When we were kids, you had fun just being around me. You didn't need us to go spelunking into some stupid volcano full of hot knives just to consider it a fun day. And you were never, never this annoying. You think I'm annoying? <laughs> that, fu that fucking pause. And you were never, never this annoying. Dramatic. Pause. You think I'm annoying? What a hoot! If only you knew. You think I'm annoying? <laughs> One more time. You think I'm annoying? <laughs> yes, you are annoying. <laughs> Glad we are on the same page about this. Other than that, and this is painful to say, I'm taking Rosemary's side on this matter. Sage's reaction is nowhere near warranted, considering the fact that Rosemary has done nothing but enjoy herself. Sage has had every opportunity to do the same, and she refuses to do so. If Sage wants to do pumpkin carving or whatever, she can just go do that. And have fun doing that. Alternatively, if spending time with Rosemary is the thing that truly makes Sage happy, she should just go with the flow and concentrate on being there for her friend. But that's not the type of person Sage is. Her idea of right of correct, of proper, is whether she is accommodated 100%. Everything must go her way, everyone must adore her, criticizing her, whether warranted or not, is a criminal offense. The only thing Sage cares about in this instance is that Rosemary isn't enjoying herself in the exact way she has pre-planned for them. Instead of making her friend happy, Sage is only interested in making herself happy. Her demented ownership of Rosemary is showing up once again. I've already gone over Sage's mangled morals and self-righteousness several times. But this is the most perfect, blatant example of Sage's true essence. She's not only bitchy about the large-scale issues, when there are things at stake, but about the pettiest of things as well. The true essence of a person comes out during the times of stress, and if this is all the push Sage needs to enter her Omega Kant mode, then she has some serious devastating mental issues. She does not function like a stable human being. It is peculiar. From a certain point of view, Sage is the only character in the show that has received any kind of true character development. At the start of the show, Sage was a me companion to Rosemary, the straight man to her goofball. She was the one with her feet on the ground, relatively speaking. But as soon as she got into the academy, gained power, managed to one-up a couple of people, she became insufferable. 
Perhaps that side of her has always been there, imagining that her company is a god's gift to mankind. Or maybe her time studying simply made her think she is better than everyone else. Bad influences all around. All the people around her are selfish idiots. So maybe it's a can't beat them, join them kinda deal? One possibility is that the writer simply rewrote her between episodes, because why would they care about consistency in this instance? They don't anywhere else. Whatever the case, as it currently stands, Sage is nothing but a selfish, hypocritical, narcissistic, despicable cunt constantly fishing for victimhood points. She's everything that's wrong with female characters in modern mainstream fiction, these kinds of fantasies can only be spawned by pens full of venom and vitriol and smugness. The kind of special hatred for fellow men that is unique to feminist land whales and misanthrope freaks. The way they see heroism is nothing short from gut-wrenching. Sage is among the most horrendous leading ladies I've ever had the displeasure to witness in any piece of fiction. And I have no doubt that one day, someone will finally get fed up with her bullshit and shoves her magic staff so far up her fart box, she'll start gacking up magic sparks from her worthless pie hole. For as much as I despise Rosemary, and make no mistake, she is a self-centered imbecile all the same, Sage has made herself infinitely worse. The fact that the writer still views Sage as a likable, relatable, level-headed girl after this event speaks volumes of how out of touch they are with the real world. Sage is never called out for her bitch fit, the eventual making up is mutual, implying that Sage's conduct has any merit? Mentally stable people do not act like this. Some variety of counseling is in order. Better yet, the Guardian Academy should vet the students beforehand for these kinds of disastrous personality disorders, before teaching them to wield lightning. This is all so frustrating, because the show already had the perfect vehicle to facilitate the split up. The cave trip, lean into it, base the conflict between the girls entirely on that. The dispute should have manifested right here. But since Sage has her bitch fit completely separate from that, this one remark fails to resonate in the way it is supposed to. It does not come from a genuine place in Sage's heart. She is not being rational, she is not worried about Rosemary, she is only being bitchy for the sake of being bitchy, and so she decides to throw Rosemary's recklessness at her face, just out of vindictiveness. Never brought up before, not before she has the desire to bash her friend. How convenient. This single dramatic gust of wind won't magically make this bullshit into anything meaningful. Piss off with this utterly laughable derivative directing, you absolute hack. These people have no clue what the fuck they are doing. The girls almost died. They should have their priorities in order. I can tell from experience that the closeness of death puts things into perspective. It adds steel to your soul. It makes you appreciate the things that you have. Everything tastes better. You stop minding this kind of petty shit. Spend an evening with your friend, by their side, hold them close, just be there for them, because you never know which goodbye is the last. Fucking pumpkin carving. And as always, a massive thanks to each of you for listening till the end. The continued support is very much appreciated, and a special thanks goes to all the supporters on Patreon as well as an extra special thanks to my 10 euro supporters, Wyland, Jesaya Vanderwatt, and Six Stars. If you would like to join these fine people, or check out any of my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.